I'm Sarah Watney and I'm head girl for Alex Bragg. Um, my favourite for a little product is Refuel Gel. We use it particularly after prospection for three days. It really helps getting the electrolytes and vitamins that the horses have lost during sweating back into the system. Thanks for tuning in to the Echo Ratings Eventing podcast. We're delighted that the Echo Ratings coverage of the 2023 Eventing European Championships is brought to you by three of our fantastic brand partners. Ride IQ, Agra Equine Insurance, and of course, Connolly's Red Mills. The crowds are back. It's a British winner. It's one of the most popular young riders in our sport, an Olympic gold medalist, Laura Collett, and London 52. And she's done it. Nicola Wilson is the individual European champion for 2021 with the 10-year-old JL Dublin. She has made history, and it's a 1-2-3 for Great Britain. Michael Young comes into the main arena. There will be few cheers louder than this today. Fisher Chipmunk FRH. And he's got his Well, it's a fairy tale for the 25 year olds from Great Britain. But in the individual, a nail biting finish, just points of a second in it for Christina Cook to win from Piggy French and from Michael Young in third. Our European eventing coverage is in full swing, listeners, so I hope you're enjoying it all thus far. This show is a little bit different because we have got a brand new host. We have got a guest on the show that we have never had on the Echo Ratings Eventing podcast before. I'm really looking forward to getting his perspective on all things Europeans, breaking into a really tough German squad and I'm not going to lie, I am massively, massively impressed because if anybody asked me to do a podcast in a language that wasn't my first language, I'm not sure I'd be overly successful. But these two have absolutely nailed it. So I hope you enjoy Constantine Harting and Jerome Robin on all things European Championships. Jerome Robin, welcome on the Echo Ratings Eventing podcast. Thanks for inviting me. Your first time on the pod. It's also my first time hosting a podcast. Um, so it's exciting times to make it even more difficult. We're doing it in English. Two German guys talking in English. <laughs> Let's do this. If that's a good good idea, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Congratulations on your first championship call-up for the senior German senior team in eventing for the European Championships in Haras de Pan next week. How does it feel to get on that uh, prestigious team as you're only 25 years of age? Yeah, it's pretty pretty special, uh, especially for the to get in on for the German team. Uh, I've been in junior and young rider teams, but to yeah step up in a senior team in a in a strong country like Germany, I think very special uh, for young for young guys. It must be amazing to be on a team with uh, names like Michael Young and Sandra Alfath. Well done. Uh, talk to me about your partner, Black Eyes, 13-year-old Irish sport horse, actually. Uh, he's owned by Dorothea von Sedwitz, if that's right. Yeah, what makes him so special? Actually, Benny is a pretty cool horse, and I'm pretty happy uh, to have him in my stable. Dorothea came to me uh, three and a half years ago. Uh, I didn't knew her and I didn't knew the horse and she she just called me and asked if I yeah want to ride him and I said yeah let's let's try it uh, maybe it works out and uh, yeah from the beginning on I had a really good feeling uh, he felt a bit like my my uh, former horse uh, Quadledu, uh where I could step up from the very first uh, junior Europeans up to four star long and. Uh, Nearly had like the same feeling, uh, jumping him, uh, going to cross country. So uh, from the beginning on, I thought, yeah, that that could be pretty good. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty happy that uh, he's still in my stable. And uh, yeah, thanks to the owner. That's always great. Uh, and obviously, we are data company, so we we took a little look at your record and. Uh, since he came to you in 2020, since you take, took over the ride, it's pretty impressive record. You had uh, 19 international runs together and you had a clear cross country in all of them. 
and actually 13 top 10 finishes on international level as well, including your first uh, five star at Lemuel this year, 10th there as well. How did the step up to five star feel for you? Touch wood, uh, I hope it, uh, the streak continues like this. No, he's a very brave force, always on my side, always uh, tries to, to do the things you, you want to uh, go with him. Um, so, actually, in cross country, uh, he's for me the best horse. Um, and uh, we went up the stepped up the levels pretty fast. Um, like we started mid of the year, three and a half years ago, with a, with a two star. Uh, ended the year with a three star long, and already the next year, after two uh, four star short, um, we had our first uh, Aachen debut, um, which was pretty special and which came pretty early for us. But he, yeah, he's that good in cross country uh, that it was a good decision. And so we went up the levels pretty fast. Um, but I think he's uh, he has the best best age now with 13 years, so uh, yeah, I think it was a good good decision for me to go for the five star, for me as well as for the horse, and uh, I think that's that's the main reason why we are now uh, yeah in the training camp for the European Championships. Yeah, uh, sounds like consistency is key there. What what is your aim for next week? Is it uh, do you want to add another? top 10 finish to you in your 20th run together or what, what's the main aim that would be great uh now i don't know as i talk to to many people uh, who are very experienced and uh, the most of them just told me just look after yourself uh, don't look right or left to 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 the others everyone has his own system and i try to give my very best um but yeah, just just look after to yourself, and then uh, you see uh, which which placing it will be. Um, but yeah, uh, I would be happy if we stay sound and have a good good run there. And what what do you expect from Harris de Pau? As I uh, saw, you went there already last year uh, with the Black Eyes as well. Um, how did you like the place, and uh, what do you expect from it as a European Championships? Uh, the the venue is uh, pretty nice, pretty cool. Uh, it's pretty hilly, so it was a good uh, experience last year and, and a good preparation to already add a ride there. Uh, I think the yeah the hills uh, will be will be difficult. It will be always up and down. Uh, all the all the jumps will be a bit up or a bit down uh, hill. So yeah, that would be. Could be the the main main thing, and uh, but I think it was a good good preparation to get there last year already. That's great. Also, you have a, a world champion on this venue in your team, so Sandro will uh, be able, and also individual silver medalist Michael Jung. So uh, they will know it inside out and uh, can give you good advice on how to ride on these tracks, right? Absolutely. Sandro already had some stories for me. Uh, <laughs> On her, on her world championship right there. Um, it was pretty interesting uh, to hear, hear some stories from them. Hopefully it will stay, stay a bit drier this time, uh, not like 2014. It's going to be dry. <laughs> Great. All right. Uh, as you said, you already arrived in France. Uh, you are on the training camp with a German team in Deauville. Tell me about that. Uh, how does that go? And when did you arrive? Yeah, we, we arrived on um, Thursday, no, uh, Wednesday, Wednesday evening. Uh, uh, to our listeners, we, we are recording this on the Friday. I don't know when this will come out, just uh, to let you guys know. We, we, we arrived at Wednesday evening and had a, yeah, just a smooth dressage session yesterday. Um, had a little gallop uh, this morning. And um, yeah, actually it's... it's uh, Fantastic here, um, fantastic surfaces, uh, perfect conditions out there. And uh, yeah, I think it's a good preparation uh, to get out of your like daily work, daily business, where you have a lot of horses, a lot of other things you have to yeah, look after and you're not that concentrated on just your horse. 
and so we all get there yeah. with one horse in a groom um, so we have a lot of time for them yeah it's actually it's, it's a good idea to get out of your daily daily work daily stuff and um, yeah it's also like a little bit of a test for the Olympics next year to say yeah uh, let's do it again or maybe we have to change something but at the moment it's uh, yeah like couldn't be better so um what are the f facilities like is there another top rider based there from france or uh, how does it look yeah it's uh, it's Asier nicolas who's who's based here yeah they have uh, amazing uh, facilities here have a gallop track uh, a bit up the hill yeah it looks all all pretty pretty well and uh, i think it's a pretty quiet place which is for us also important You really can concentrate on your on your rides, and uh, so it looks like uh, like we're gonna be there next year. Sounds like a bit like the calm before the storm next week, right? Um, what will the next few days look like? Give us an insight into uh, how you will prepare yourself and and the horses for the Europeans next week. Yeah, actually, it's pretty uh, different from. For all of us, uh, every everyone has another system. So uh, yeah, all the trainers are here, all the staff, physio, um, vets, uh, everyone is here, and so you get what you need in the end. Um, try to ride a bit dressage, some show jumping before we leave. Yeah, that's it. When will you leave? When will you go to Haras uh, Park? Monday uh, afternoon, we will uh, go to Haras. And it's only a, a one-hour drive or something. I yeah, understand. That was. Oh, great! Let's turn back time a little bit. Where did your love for horses come from, Jerome? Actually, it's my yeah, it's a family thing. In the end, uh, my parents, um, yeah, both uh, were riding a bit, not as professional as I'm doing it, um, more as an amateur. Uh, but my father uh, already rode up to four star just as an amateur he's a vet but um that's a bit i think the, the where it comes from my mom is a was a riding dressage so there's yeah it's really a family thing and um yeah i'm, I'm the one who is doing it the whole day now <laughs> super but also your two siblings also riding right yeah exactly um we started all uh, together then my brother Had a little break of 10 years. Uh, <laughs> uh, played played basketball pretty good. Four years ago, he said like, "No, I'm still interested in riding." Um, he, so he started again, and my sister is also, yeah, riding again more as an amateur. Um, but they both have a good feeling for the horse, and uh, I think that's that's uh, yeah, pretty nice to see them. And was it always the eventing side of things that drove you, or did you ever think about another discipline? Yeah, I started uh, started with uh, show jumping uh, the first years, and then my father, uh, yeah, took me to a national national uh, class, but which wasn't already in an event where you had to. Uh, stable your horses and had good evening with friends there and uh, so it was like uh, yeah well, like an adventure for me and uh, <laughs> then I had a good cross country one it was just 80 centimeters but it uh, yeah felt pretty good and I was absolutely happy and I said okay that's that's what I want to do and uh, that's amazing I'm um, actually in the The next competitions, uh, it does not work out. I always had stops and uh, nothing worked. Um, but this first feeling was uh, absolutely amazing. So I stick to it. Great. And very lucky that you got this feeling again. Absolutely. <laughs> After a few hiccups. And actually, your family plays a re really big role in uh, providing you horses as well. Did your first uh, youth championships uh, with... Uh, Homebred horses, if that's right. Five youth championships, I think three or four medals already there. Tell me about these horses uh, which took you there. Yeah, I think I was pretty lucky in my in my younger ages. 
uh, with uh, Quadledu and Gucci Mo, uh, both homebred horses, which came to the like perfect uh, perfect time for me. Went to my first Europeans with 16 years, and uh, yeah, won two medals there, right? Won two medals, bronze. Lucky there, two medals in the very beginning. I thought it will continue the same way, but it didn't. Uh, I knew then that's the sport. But now I, with the, these two, they, yeah, like I said before, I really had the same feeling as I have now with Benny. They're pretty honest, pretty brave. Uh, always try to give their best uh, for the rider. And uh, that's, that's, I think, the key point in our sport that the horses really have to want to go with you. And um, both of them really had this. Uh, so, yeah, I was pretty lucky uh, with both horses. That's great. And and Quadalu and Guccimo, they also gave you your first four-star experience and also their first your first uh, Senior Nations Cup call-ups, right? Yeah, we really went up uh, from, from two-star uh, junior classes up to four-star short, four-star long. And... Uh, Yeah, I thought for me it was like normal to get up with the horses this way. And then uh, after that, I had like a few other horses where it didn't go that easy, I would say. And then I knew, okay, that was pretty special with both of them to have yeah, exactly these horses, these homebred horses who, who gave you that much. And uh, yeah, so now I'm lucky to, to have again uh, another one who's, who's that good. Super. And uh, along the way, do you have any role models or, or people you look up to in the eventing world? Uh, there, there are a lot. There are a lot of, of, of people. Uh, I really like to, to look on them, on the warm-up, on their, on their daily work, um, because you can uh, take that much out of these, of these little details uh, in the daily work. So, yeah, of course... It is uh, Ingrid, it is uh, Mickey, it is Sandra, but also like in the younger ages, I uh, was a big fan of Andrew Hoy because his, his cross-country riding was always very smooth and easy. And um, yeah, so there are a lot of role models and uh, that's pretty special to, to ride next to them and to train with them. And uh, yeah, as I said, I... I can learn a lot of, out of their daily work um, or the, the warm-up they do. Um, it's pretty, pretty special and pretty nice to see them. And also for us, which is like normal now, but um, Julia, of course, is, uh, yeah, had a perfect system. Uh, we learned a lot or still learning a lot from her with her system to buy it up, especially young horses to the very uh, top levels. Yeah, that's, uh, that's something I learned from her and uh, she really brings me up yet. Talking about Julia Kareski, uh, in 2017, you made a big change to your setup. Uh, you went away from your uh, yeah, family base, family stable in Darmstadt. You went to uh, Warendorf, became part of, of the German army system there and also Uh, in Germany, it's called Perspektivgruppe, an elite group of young riders who are allowed to train there in Warendorf all, all together. Um, what makes Warendorf so attractive for young riders in Germany? Yeah, I, I talked to a few guys from UK or France, and it's uh, actually pretty unique, uh, I would say. And um, for me, it's a perfect place because you have that many good riders around you you know um, when I came there uh, there was Bettina Hoy there was Julia Krajewski they were very good show jumpers very good dressage riders so they are like a lot of good riders around you where can you can look after them and see okay that's how she does this how she works with that kind of horse and that kind of horse and they're always willing to help you so I think that's the, the main reason for me. Because, you know, when you're at home, um, you're always the king. Uh, you're always, like, the best. And uh, when you get there, uh, you see, okay, 
there are different things. Uh, there's somebody better than you in that way, in that way. You can put things together. That's for me the the the, the main thing. Uh, that there are so many good riders. Um, but of course, we have all all these trainers there. Markus Döring, good dressage trainers there. Um, Julia for for the all the management and the um, cross country training. Um, so yeah, you could if you want, you can nearly ride uh, every day with a trainer. And and fantastic facilities as well give our listeners an insight into the facilities you have there in Warndorf. Uh, absolutely uh, like three or four big show jumping arenas where you could put a thing for dressage and uh, have a very good uh, cross-country place i would say and uh, yeah this for everyone who gets there it's uh, pretty special like chris bartle once said it's uh, Warndorf is his, is its own world it's not the not the real world <laughs> And uh, I think, yeah, it's for, for every rider, nearly perfect. It's a, it's a dream for every event, event rider, right? Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. What, what is your big goal? What drives you? Uh, is it the big five stars? Is it a championship? Is it the Olympics? Uh, all of them a bit. All of them a bit. No, uh, was, the five star was pretty special for me in this year. Um, Of course, the first senior championships now, uh, the Olympic Games, a uh, little goal for me. Uh, of course, it's hard to, to get there as a German rider, but uh, yeah, maybe you can dream a bit of it. And uh, But it's also the daily work with the, with the horses you like. Um, I really have to say at the moment, I just have horses in my stable. I really like to work with them every day. Um, and that's for me the main <laughs> main thing uh, that's pretty important for me uh, to have these good young horses uh, you really say oh, oh you you have to go you have to be happy when you go in the in the stable in the morning and to see them and say oh let's let's do it again and uh, so yeah that's that's the, pre the the coolest thing is to buy them up uh, from the very young age Super. Talking about youngsters, uh, our listeners would love to follow a youngster in your stable who, who they might not know at this point, but uh, they will hopefully do in, in two years' time. You have a youngster in the, in the stable which they could follow? There's, there's one who, who looks pretty special. It's, uh, he's called Thorsten. Uh, pretty, yeah, pretty, the name. Legendary name, yeah. <laughs> Name is also pretty special, and um, now I, when I bought him, uh, I said like he, he looks a bit like Vesco. Um, that's that's also a horse I really really loved in the past, and uh, I said like yeah, it's funny maybe maybe he's going to be that good, and now he's he's a very good in dressage, good jumper, very brave also in cross country. Already won his first intro class. Uh, Uh, he went to so yeah he will be he will be a good one uh, one we have to to look after super so big shoes to fill uh Thorsten, Thorsten fills the footsteps of wesco <laughs> jerome fills the footsteps of tim price right <laughs> but already won an uh, international win under his belt that's great uh, Thorsten, a name to remember <laughs> um jerome thanks a lot for for your time and uh enjoy your training camp enjoy your time All the best and good luck in Harris the Pond next week and um, hopefully talk soon. Thank you very much. Now, listeners, let's talk insurance for just a moment because we all want to make sure that our horses are as well looked after as they possibly can be. And let's be totally honest, while we hope that we never need to call upon insurance, With horses, you can never be too sure. And that is why we have teamed up with Agria as one of our partners for the Eventing Europeans coverage, because they're the only insurance provider within the UK that offers lifetime equine insurance. And that means that there are no exclusions applied on new conditions that begin once the policy is in place, which means that vets fees are covered year after year. 
They stand by their mission to provide the best possible care for horses and all pets as well. And importantly, peace of mind for owners. It's a market they know really well because the company first started in Sweden back in 1890. And Agria have a really tailored approach to keeping things simple and uncomplicated, which listeners, as I'm sure you can agree, is music to everyone's ears. We all love simple and uncomplicated. So if you'd like to find out more, why don't you go and pay a visit to agriapet.co.uk. Now, listeners, have you ever felt like you're training with your horse at home and you're just not quite sure what to do next or how to get the results that you're looking for? Well, we have all been there, me in particular, not going to lie, which is why we're delighted to welcome Ride IQ on board as partners for our European coverage this year. Their online platform offers on-demand audio with lessons taught by top equestrian coaches from all over the world. The likes of their team includes Olympians like Leslie Law, Doug Payne, Gina Smith and Kyle Carter. So many top riders. Things like this little gem from John Holling on a light flat work lesson give you a taste of what might be in store for you. Careful you don't lean to the inside, lift your inside shoulder. And if you feel like you are leaning a little bit, one little trick that sometimes helps is you tip your head a little bit and lift that inside ear and your shoulder usually will follow. And then put your head back on straight, looking out through your horse's ears. And when you're ready, I want you to prepare for sitting trot. And let's sit 10 steps and rise good and the goal there like we've worked on in the past is that that trot stays the same right so if you feel like you're quite literally going around in circles pardon the pun to feel like i should do a little drum roll uh, then why not give it a go and take advantage of a huge amount of help with everything from your dresser jumping groundwork uh, rider fitness and even a little bit of sports psychology in there too it is completely free to trial the app for 14 days so quite frankly you've got absolutely nothing to lose plus if you like it then you can always use the code echo ratings 20 for 20 percent off your first month subscription head to ride iq.com for more 